Like, comment, and subscribe, but don't actually do that. It's time for more Fez. Hear the owls. See their effigy. Assemble the parliament. Of all the puzzles and mysteries of Fez, the owls are one of the most mysterious. Ever present, ever watching. They seem to be the closest things to gods in this world. And they also appear to be gatekeepers of a sort. There is a room in the graveyard where we are given nothing but an owl statue. There is nothing we can do with it, nowhere else we can go but out, and no clues given to us. Just the owl. But the graveyard, as we already know, is a place of secrets. It's a place where things are locked away with considerable care. When we look at the map, we can see that there is somewhere beyond the owl. So how to open the path? There is another owl statue we can access, and it does give us a clue. In the ancient city, we are told to assemble the parliament, so we need to find some owls and bring them together. The world of Fez has many animals, but where would the owls be? The ancient villagers might know, but they don't speak English, and I get the feeling they wouldn't be much help even if they did. Who else would know enough about the world to help us find the owls? There is someone. One person. Giza himself won't give us any help directly on where to find the owls, but he was kind enough to leave us some paintings of his own world travels. A small tree next to a purple object. That looks spot on to me. A giant pink tree. Well, there's only one area with pink trees, so that narrows it down nicely. And that looks pretty close. That's obviously the windmill. Yep, definitely the windmill. And a shaded tree next to a cabin. Perfect. The other way to find all these locations is by completing almost every other puzzle in the game and still having white borders on their map squares, which I imagine is how most people found them originally. Now we just have to wait for nightfall. Great, here's the owl. Now what? Well, we did get told to hear the owls, and we were able to observe the statues with the conversation button.
pretty sneaky, Fez. Of all the animals, we can only talk to the owls. And upon talking to each one, we receive a couple of lines of dialogue before they fly away. Alright, last one. Great, now let's get out. Uh, wait, 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 what? What? What is that? When was that there? Was that always there? It looks like a secret passageway to the mines, visible only in the light of the moon... Whatever, I'm getting distracted. Owls. Now that we've conversed with all four of them, what do we do? Where do we go? Well, it's kind of obvious. We have to go back to the effigy. At last. With what we last found behind a secret door in the graveyard. I'm a little unsure about this. But we must press on. Uh, an even bigger owl. And an anti-cube. And... Wait. That... I've seen that before. Okay, I may have told a slight lie of omission by collecting this cube bit between videos in regular new game. I had forgotten about this room and maintained that you could complete the game without completing any puzzles, just platforming. As it turns out, I'm wrong, and I couldn't be more pleased with the reality of the game's design. It's set up so that, ideally, the player cannot get 32 cubes without paying attention enough to solve at least one puzzle throughout the entire game. It's undermined a little by the fact that you can stumble into a couple of anti-cubes without really thinking or trying, but it's still a stroke of genius to get the player to change their mindset into that of solving puzzles, even if they try to coast along with the platforming through the rest of the game up to that point. The way these guys are all facing the owl... I think this was another place of worship. I don't think we should be here, Gomez. It... It, it feels like we're trespassing. Oh no. Now the owl won't look at us anymore. Have... have we offended them? Are we cursed? We're totally cursed, aren't we? I knew this would happen if I messed around in a graveyard.
I almost wish it would look at us again. Well, almost. The most striking aspect of an owl that people typically notice is its large eyes. An owl has a field of view of about 110 degrees. While this is by no means the greatest range of vision on a bird, it's the owl's binocular vision that's more impressive, at roughly 70 degrees, or 63% of its total vision. For reference, the maximum field of view humans have is 180 degrees, 140 of which are binocular vision, 77%. This wide range of binocular vision allows owls to easily see objects in three dimensions and perceive depth and distance as we do. While the human eye is more spherical, owl eyes are elongated tubes. This shape gives owls telescopic vision, able to hone in on things quite easily, though owls are also incredibly far-sighted and have trouble perceiving things up close to them. Due to the shape of the eyes, the owl is incapable of moving its eyes and looking in any direction other than straight ahead, but it makes up for this with the ability to turn its head. An owl's neck has 14 vertebrae, twice as many as humans, and one bone situated atop their backbone, compared to a human's two. Combined with the arrangement of the owl's muscle structure and the arrangement of various blood vessels that allow blood to flow unimpeded, owls have the ability to turn their head from the resting forward-facing position a whopping 270 degrees. They can't turn their head in a full circle, but they will get close enough. Vision alone would be enough, however owls also have exceptional hearing on certain frequencies that allow them to locate prey, the ability to fly silently with no sound of rushing air as it passes over their wings, and naturally powerful talons and beaks. The owl is an impressive bird of prey. The general appearance of an owl can be quite intimidating. Its eyes have a certain piercing quality to them, and its fairly flat, downturned beak gives the impression of a constant scowl. These facts are likely why the owl is known as a symbol to be feared in the history of certain cultures. However, the owl has often been viewed as a positive symbol as well. In ancient Greece, owls were the symbol of Athene, goddess of wisdom, and its appearance over soldiers before battle was a sign of victory. In early Roman civilization, the hoot of an owl signified imminent death. The deaths of Julius Caesar, Augustus, and others were supposedly predicted by owls. In 18th and 19th century England, the barn owl was considered sinister, being a bird of darkness, which was at the time associated with death. Again, the call of an owl was believed to mean imminent death if it flew past the window of a sick person. In both Roman and English history, nailing an owl to the door of a house to ward off evil was customary. In Native American tribes, the meaning of owls are quite varied. Several believe the owl brings sickness and death, however, others see owls as a state of reincarnation, a protective spirit for warriors, holders of the souls of the recently deceased, and so on. Thanks to the association with Athene, in modern Western culture, owls are generally associated with wisdom, hence the collective nouns for owls being parliament and wisdom. Perhaps the piercing nature of the eyes can also be interpreted as the owl looking into a person, through them, or that the owl is an observer, or can see the world for what it really is. It's unclear whether owls in Fez are intended to be a good or bad omen. Certainly they have a greater knowledge than that of the player, and are worshipped by the ancient villagers, but they are also a creepy visage and when they have all been conversed with, they convene in a graveyard, a place of death. Whatever the case, owls are certainly not as they seem.